In this video, we're going to talk about building an enterprise data model using universal mappings in ER Studio. So we're going to go through a number of points. First of all, what is an enterprise data model and then why it's useful. And then we'll cover how to actually use and build one in ER Studio using Team Server Core and Data Architect. So first of all, here's a standard data model. We've got two elements to it. We've got our logical model at the top and our physical model at the bottom and this whole model might represent a single isolated project maybe uh, modeling a database so in this case we've got an hr database so the physical model represents the physical schema of the database so in technical language and then we've got our projects level model at the top in, in business language it represents useful business metadata um, about that uh, data asset so we might end up with many many projects models. We've got many different data assets, so we need to produce a model of each of them. So the enterprise data model gives us some extra parts. So down at the bottom, we've got a number of those, those project models we're looking at. And then at the top, we've got a single representation of the information of the organization that is mapped to all of those multiple project models. In this case, we've got two parts to our enterprise part of the model. We've got an enterprise conceptual model and an enterprise logical model. The conceptual model really has a smaller number of entities within it. It really is a sort of summary of the core information uh, concepts, components, master data entities, critical data elements, whatever you want to call them. So a small number of these uh, these entities. You may or may not have them attributed. You may or may not have relationships between them. Um, but it really gives you that sort of high level summary of the information of the organization. The next level down the enterprise logical model. Now this will have more detail. It will be attributed. It will be in third normal form usually. And it contains all of the common concepts of the organization. So there might be individual um, entities or concepts that are in the application models that are specific to that application that might not be of interest in our enterprise logical model. The enterprise logical model will really contain standardized definitions of concept with standard sets of, of attributes, standard data types that we can use to, to really understand all our information and data assets. Now there's an extension of this. One of the, the base uses of our enterprise data model, the conceptual and the logical parts, is a mechanism to, to understand the data assets of the organization, to be able to manage those data assets and then govern them. So traditionally in the past, when data architects managed data, the enterprise data model will, would really have all the sort of rules around our information we could then use to, to govern um, our data. Nowadays, we have the, the business glossary over on the left-hand side. So this is a separate model generally owned by a different part of the organization, the data governance organization. So they will manage their understanding of the information of the organization within the business glossary. So we'll have a bunch of business terms um, with relationships between them. We'll have the standard definitions and rules uh, assigned to those business terms and then we might attach those business terms into our data models if we've got an enterprise data model there should be a lot of similarity semantically between the the business glossary and our enterprise data model this is the the common important pieces of information around the organization the business glossary doesn't really differentiate between entities and attributes it just has a series of business terms with relationships the, the enterprise logical model will have more rigor to it and we use that to then drive the creation of new data models. And we will also use that to bring together all of our understandings of the, the different data assets. So if I'm looking for client information, I can go to my enterprise logical model, look for client, and then see a whole range of project models um, with instances of that client entity. And they might use different names within those different models. So why is an enterprise data model useful? So Having this, this framework of common concepts with standard definitions and attributes really improves the consistency across our applications data, allows us to, to compare uh, like with like. And this gives us a framework which we can manage those data assets. And not only can we manage them, then we've got the element of governance there. We can specify rules for specific pieces of information. And then we can audit each individual data asset to ensure that it complies with those rules. 
as we're developing new application data assets then we've got a framework to, to communicate with our stakeholders. We've already got the information models and, and understanding. We can use that to, to drive our early designs for data assets. The warehouse, so data analytics improves. We can use that enterprise data model to, to design our data warehouse. So again, we've, we've got a framework from the information of the organization that's already been uh, accepted and approved. So we can use that to, to structure our data warehouse, which means that finding information will be a lot easier. Putting data into the warehouse will be a lot easier. As we're building integrations between existing applications, as we're bringing in new applications, we've then got a standardized understanding of our information and where that is and which applications use it. So building integration frameworks uh, is easier. If we wanted to build a common messaging framework, then it becomes easier. So there's lots of benefits to having an enterprise data model. So let's go and browse a model that we've already got in, in Team Server. So again, the structure we're going to look at is we've got an enterprise conceptual model at the top, breaking down into a separate model with our enterprise logical, and then onto a number of project level models. So over in Team Server, in our ER Tools tab, we've grouped together our corporate or enterprise data models, and then we've got a catalog of all of our individual data assets or applications. Um, in the folder for our corporate data models, we've got corporate conceptual and the corporate logical. So I can drill down, let's go and look at the diagram. So again, a small uh, number of entities in our corporate or enterprise conceptual model. Here I've got employee and I can open up employee and I can see a definition of employee. I can drill down to the entities in my enterprise logical data model to add more detail to the conceptual employee entity. And in Team Server, I can keep on journeying across the model. Again, seeing the, the definitions of these and then navigate through the relationships. So here in this diagram, if I expand the detail, then I've got my corporate conceptual data model at the top with its notion of employee that drills down to our corporate enterprise logical data models version of employee which then drills down um, to our project level data models and we can see that in our HR database we have the notion of employee as an entity but over in AdventureWorks we use the term staff and salesperson but they are instances of employee my corporate logical so going over to data architects we can see the same relationship so here we are in projects data model it's checked into the repository so here's my employee entity. If I open up the employee entity, I can then go to the where use tab. And the where use tab here is going to tell me all the relationships from this logical entity in this model. So first of all, it's telling me that I've got two physical models with instances of employee within it. So I've got a, I've got a physical model in Snowflake, two tables that are instances of entity and likewise in the SQL Server model. And it's also telling me here that it relates back to my employee entity in my corporate logical data model. Okay, and it's doing that through universal mapping. So I can navigate these relationships both in Team Server and within Data Architect. So let's have a look and see how we actually create these relationships. So first of all, we're going to create the mappings manually. And we're going to go to our repository tab and find the universal mappings editor. Now this allows you to browse all of the models in the repository. So here are the entities that we're looking at in our local model here. So we're, we've already selected the employee entity. So in this case, we're going to map back to our corporate logical data model. So we find the logical model within there. And as soon as we click on it, it then gives us a list of all of the entities in the corporate or enterprise logical data model, and then we can map them. So here I've already mapped employee. You can also put information about how these are mapped together and create a, a definition for that mapping. Most of the time, it's just a simple mapping. You can also go down to an attribute level. So if I find employee type, then it's, it's going to give me access to all of the attributes in my enterprise logical data model. And I can go and find the appropriate attribute employee type of the employee entity. Again, that's already been mapped. So that's the manual way to create these universal mappings across the models within our repository.
Before moving on, it's worth pointing out to synchronize these universal mappings back to Teams server. Now we can either do it manually through another ribbon bar entry that I'll show you in a moment. We can select synchronize changes to repository immediately. And as soon as you click OK, then it'll go and synchronize the local model um, with Teams server. The other option is within the repository tab to select synchronize external data. And that does exactly the same thing. Now the second option we've got to, to create these universal mappings is a little bit more automated. We're going to use the compare merge uh, functionality, which has got quite a lot of intelligence within it. So we're going to open up compare merge and we're going to compare our project model with another model in the, in the repository. And we can select the corporate logical data model. And we can choose a submodel of the corporate logical. We'll select training and then hit next. OK, so I've got all the entities in my project model. And then I've got my entities in my corporate logical model. And what we want to do now is, is map them together. So I can select address over here and then right click on the opposite side and then hit match objects and what that'll do is then is then create a, a match between them and then go through them all so external agency here we call it agency over here so i can i can match them now compare merge has got some clever features so as i matched the entities what it then went, did is go through all the attributes underneath and then if there's any name or position similarities then it'll attempt to match the attributes as well so it really does sort of help me create those matches between the two models. Now, once I've completed that, so all I need to do is, is save the matches. And I've got various options, so I can synchronize those matches as soon as I hit finish. They can be saved as universal mappings there. And then as soon as I hit finish, it'll then go and create all those universal mappings for me. And just to prove that, so we've got external agency. We go to our where use tab. We can see universal mapping to our corporate logical data model, our enterprise data model, and there's agency. And also down at the attribute level, so I go to agency name. I can see on the where use tab there, agency, agency name. Okay, so We've seen how we can build an enterprise data model. We've seen how we can browse through the model in Teams server. So all the extended teams of users out there can, can browse through the model across these relationships, across the models. We've seen how we can build those relationships using the universal mapping tool and also through compare merge, which provides us a little bit of automation in there. We've also talked about why enterprise data models are useful. So again, a mechanism, a framework to try and standardize our understanding of information and then use that to, to manage and govern our data assets and also to improve time to produce models of new data assets, a mechanism to, to manage and create our, our data warehouse, a framework to allow our applications to, to communicate with one another. So that's how to build an enterprise data model with universal mappings in ER Studio. Thanks for listening.